Good evening, this is uh, Will, and I'm coming at you from the studios of Cigar Coop over in Indian Trail, North Carolina. And this is the final video I'm doing on the uh, Drew Estate Cigar Safari series that you've been watching over the past few weeks. I opted to do this video from the home base to recap a few of the blends that I've gotten a chance to participate in on my two trips to Nicaragua. So there was actually one blend I did on the uh, March trip that you watched the series for, or might have watched the series for, and then there were two blends that I did on the Jewish State Cigar Safari. So I want to recap a few of the blends here and just kind of give some thoughts or insights into them. So we'll start off with a blend that I did uh, back in March when I did visit the Jewish State Cigar Factory on that trip as well. And I opted to do a Brazilian Matafina wrapper, and you can to hopefully take a good look at the camera here. Yeah, the light um, went down faster than I thought. But you can see it's a chocolate colored wrapper and I um, actually named this cigar the Precision Accuracy. And you can see I went with a 6x52 Toro here. And overall, the why I called it Precision Accuracy is not because it was a great cigar, but um, what I actually was looking for is I wanted to have a lot of chocolate and spice out of this cigar. And essentially that's what I what I got out of it. The, the resulting um, cigar was actually pretty good. Um, I actually enjoyed it. I was surprised that I didn't have to put it down. I did get a chance to smoke this 30 days after the trip, and overall, it, it was good. I'm not going to say it's a uh, cigar of the year. I'm not a blender by any means, but I was pleased that I got the chocolate and the spice that I was looking for out of it. I mentioned I went with a Brazilian Matafina wrapper. I paired it with an um, American Habano binder from Connecticut that you see on a lot of the Liga Pravada cigars. So um, that you know, that's, a, that's some tobacco that's really a signature tobacco of Drew Estate, and I wanted to include it in the blend. And then I went with fillers from Esteli and Jalapa to uh, to give it you know give it a Nicaraguan feel because you know I was in Nicaragua. So overall, the um, strength of this cigar actually was about medium to full. It had a little more strength than body from it. I'd say the body was medium when, when all was said and done. So I thought the strength had a little more of an edge. I would have liked to have had some more body on this cigar. Again, it was only 30 days, so I'm going to give it, you know, another, um, you know, another 30 to 60 days. Give another one a smoke and see if anything ch settles down or changes. So it may still be a young cigar. But overall, you know, it was, it was a, a fun exercise to do on that. And um, I was pleased with, with the outcome on that. The next two cigars are actually cigars that um, I blended on the recent Jewish State cigar, cigar Safari trip. And we blended one at Hoya de Nicaragua, and we blended another one at the Jewish State factory where I blended the, the uh, Precision Accuracy. So I'll take you through these. Now, you might have watched the video already where I blended the one at Hoya de Nicaragua, and I actually went through the tobaccos in a little more detail. Um, and I, if you watch that video, I mentioned that I used the... Uh, Nicaraguan Dark Corojo wrapper that's on the Hoya de Nicaragua uh, Dark Corojo Antonio, which is uh, the, that Dark Corojo wrapper is beautiful. It's a coffee bean colored wrapper, a little bit of, of Colorado tint to it. And that cigar has really become a, a signature of Hoya de Nicaragua right now. It's just been a fabulous cigar that they've put out, and it's getting better over time. And um, if you remember from that video, I paired it with a uh, Ecuadorian Connecticut binder, and then I put some Seiko from Jalapa, some Viso from Esteli, and then I combined uh, some Lajero from both Jalapa and Esteli. And this cigar was actually about 40% Lajero in the filler, so Jose Blanco, uh, who made a guest appearance um, in that video, actually said I created a bomb, so we'll, we'll see what happens if it's strong or, or just a bomb in general. The, I have not smoked this as of yet. This cigar is only a few days old, so I want to give it some proper time for aging, and maybe I'll record a video at some point to kind of uh, review the experiences with, with this cigar. I named this cigar Fabio, and uh, why I named Fabio? I just had the name in my head. I saw, I saw the name Fabio on some telephone poles painted around Esteli, so I was wondering if it was some candidate running. I'm, I'm not sure what it was, but I saw the name Fabio for several days, and it just kind of rolled off my tongue. So... I called this the Fabio, and how Fabio it is, I I can't say, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. This uh, also, you can see, it's kind of a uh, Toro size cigar. It's a little, it's you know, it's a little thinner than normally I go for. It's um, but overall, it's, I'm I'm pleased with with this. It's a nice Parejo. 
The last uh, cigar is um, another one I blended over at the Joy Escape Factory. This one is a 5.5 by 52 uh, Robusto. And if you're looking at the color here, it's yes, it's using a Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. And I decided uh, to be different. Everyone else in the group was not using Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. So I said, uh, why not? And you know, it's not. I know it's not something you see in a lot of the Liga Privada cigars, but it is a, um, you know, it was an option, and I I opted to go with with that option there. The other reason I went with uh, this wrapper is, you, if you follow the cigar industry, you know that Ecuadorian Connecticut shade cigars are right now trendy. There's a lot of them coming out, and everyone's trying to do something different. I wanted to see if I could do something different. I wanted to see if I can. Uh, Push the zone a bit. Yeah, I didn't. I was looking in the end to create something that's medium strength, medium body. Uh, if I can get it to medium to full body, I'd consider that a huge plus. I I don't know if that's going to be the case. I haven't smoked this one as of yet either. Um, just kind of recap the blend a bit. It is an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper, and I paired that also with the American Habano binder that's that I used in the, the Precision Accuracy, and then I opted to. Um, work with some Nicaraguan fillers along with some uh, Brazilian and Mexican fillers and really my goal with those fillers was to try to amp the cigar up a bit and at the same time create some flavor which I think is what a lot of folks are doing so there's nothing revolutionary I'm doing here I, I opt to be a little more of a mad scientist with this cigar I'm not sure what it's going to come out to be but what I'll do is I'll recap a little bit of the blend for you um, I went with some Viso and Lajero from Esteli, and actually uh, the Lajero is ASP Esteli, which is a pretty strong Lajero, so hopefully that, that I used a leaf of that, and I'm hoping it amped up this cigar enough to give it, you know, again, push it towards that medium strength area, which is what I was looking for. Um, the Viso Juan Esteli is something I actually use in the Precision Accuracy, and I love the aromas that came out of that cigar, so I opted to use it again. Um, I also went with uh, some Seiko from Jalapa, actually Criollo 98 uh, Seiko, which again, I love the aroma out of that, so I, I decided to go with that. I also opted for some Viso Jalapa C98, which um, really, uh, that's a sun-grown uh, tobacco, supposedly also gives it a little bit of strength, so seeing if it does the job. And then I scattered in uh, some Brazilian Matafina into the filler, and um, that's some Brazilian Matafina Viso, and some just a touch of Mexican Seiko uh, from San Andreas. It, um, that was my mad scientist angle. There was nothing more with that. So this cigar, actually, I have um, came up with the name uh, Smooth Esteli right now. So we'll see if it's uh, Smooth Esteli. The idea is hopefully it's smooth and hopefully the Esteli uh, connection, you know, cigars from Esteli are known to have a little bit of a bite, so hopefully it has a little bit of that bite as well. So we'll see how that goes. So this is going to conclude the series of videos I'm doing on uh, the Drew State Cigar Safari, and I want to just do some acknowledgments at the end of this video. First, I want to thank the staff at Drew State for allowing me to participate in the Cigar Safari. This was just an outstanding trip, and I, I couldn't have been surrounded by a better bunch of uh, media professionals. And um, you know, I met a lot of great folks from the online media. These, every one of these folks are true professionals. They are at the top of their game, and I, I can't say enough about them. And we had some folks with CRA and some retailers along the way as well, and, and some social media folks. And again, these these are just outstanding people, and they they all have their contributions to the cigar industry in a unique way. So I couldn't have been surrounded by better people. As far as the staff from Drew Estate, I want to send a thank you to Jonathan Drew and Steve Saka, who really... Um, took us through the the, uh, the Drew Estate operations, and they spent a lot of time out of their busy schedules. And um, I could, you, as you saw from the videos, that they were they were absolutely informative. So I, I can't thank them enough. There's some behind the scenes folks I want to thank um, John Brooke, who put a lot of the logistics together uh, for the Drew Estate Cigar Safari, and Pedro Gomez, who actually executed on a lot of those logistics while we were there, and they just did a tremendous job. We had some guest folks as well participate in the, in the Cigar Safari. Jose Blanco from Hoya de Nicaragua and Mario Perez were just tremendous. And you, you may know that Jose Blanco, from his La Aurora days, he joined Hoya de Nicaragua at the, uh, you know, actually late last year. And he's, you know, already uh, changing the face of that company. And we're going to see a lot of exciting things from him on that. 
We also had uh, Gilberto Oliva from Oliva Cigars um, pay a visit to us, and he's just a true gentleman. Enjoyed talking with him. And we had um, Gary Griffith, who I consider a, a friend of mine, and Gary is a true med scientist in the cigar world, and he's doing some incredible things with Emilio Cigars. And um, I tell you, Gar Gary's a name to watch for the future because um, he's just doing some fabulous stuff, working with some of the best people in the industry right now. He's a wealth of information on the uh, cigar industry. So uh, it was great catching up with Gary again. So I'm going to call this a wrap for the um, Cigar Safari series. And I thank everyone for uh, watching, listening, and um, we'll talk again soon.